so here we comes to the fifth video of visual fields series we will discuss mostly neurological visual field defects so the first defect i am showing you is enlarged blind spot now here it is shown bilateral enlarged blind spot that can occur in cases of papilledema glaucoma myopic crescent optic disc colobomas myelinated nerve fibers of the disc choroiditis and other diseases as well now arcuate scotomas are formed not only in glaucoma but also in optic neuritis anterior ischemic optic neuropathy late papilledema and optic disc pit as well so you should remember other causes besides glaucoma as well and now we are showing you central scotoma now central scotoma can occur in compressive lesions they first always cause central scotomas for example meningiomas papillitis optic neuritis amd macular dystrophies anything that is present on the center of the macula can cause central scotomas and now we are showing you a centrocecal scotoma that is going from blind spot to central fixation now centrocecal scotomas are caused by toxic and nutritional optic neuropathies pernicious anemia vitamin b12 deficiency b1 deficiency thymine optic disc pit toxic al alcohol syndrome tobacco alcohol amblyopia dominant optic atrophy all these can cause centrocecal scotomas altitudinal scotomas can be caused by anterior ischemic optic neuropathy hemispheric vein occlusion retinal vein occlusion retinal artery occlusion glaucoma and ptosis and now comes a very interesting visual fields uh, one eye is completely dark so central scotoma and the other eye has got superior temporal defect so that is called a junctional scotoma prechiasmal compressive lesions like uh, tuberculum cell meningiomas can cause junctional scotomas because the inferior nasal fibers sometimes they loop into the other tract and when they are compressed other eye superior temporal defect occurs so when some neurological lesions affect the eye at the level of optic chiasm or posterior to the optic chiasm neuro neurological visual fields then respect the vertical meridian and homonymous or heteronymous hemi anopsias are produced like here you can see the temporal side is affected and the nasal side is spared and now when both sides are shown it is by temporal hemi anopsia that usually occurs in pituitary adenoma or any other structure or mass compressing the optic chiasm will produce bitemporal defects now as pituitary adenoma compresses the chiasm from below early in the course of disease you will get bitemporal superior quadrantinopia and as the disease progresses the tumor enlarges it can progress to complete by temporal hemi anopsia and if you get a visual field with a bitemporal inferior quadrantinopia it means that a structure from above is compressing the optic chiasm usually craniopharyngeomas produce inferior quadrantinopias by temporally then visual fields of posterior chiasmal lesions they will show you homonymous field defects like here you can see the right homonymous hemi anopsia it means that the left optic tract lesion 
and now comes the pie in the sky so the right homonymous superior quadrantinopia these are usually seen in the temporal lobe lesions and now the visual fields they are showing a pie in the floor pie in the floor or homonymous bilateral inferior quadrantinopias they are usually seen in the parietal lobe lesions now this lesion a ring scotoma a tunnel vision you can also see in the advanced glaucoma but not only in the advanced glaucoma but also in the bilateral occipital infarcts with macular sparing or central ret bilateral central retinal occlusion artery occlusion with cilio retinal sparing extensive prp uh, very severe retinitis pigmentosa so that was all about the neurological visual field defects and after watching this video i hope you will be able to differentiate different defects thank you